Hi and welcome to a Calculus 1 video on derivatives of logarithms and exponential functions. In this video we will specifically look at examples using the logarithmic and exponential differentiation. So let's take a look at a few of the rules that will be needed to apply to these functions perhaps before we do derivatives. So I wrote those out below the derivatives. We should remember that if we have log base a of a product, that that then becomes the sum of the two logs because again, remember logarithms are exponents, so your rules for the logarithm properties will be very similar to your exponent rules. If I have log base a of m to some exponent, that becomes multiplication in front of the log. And then if I have a quotient, that becomes the difference of the logs. And then very important here, I have a change of base formula, which I will use to show one of the derivatives that I have listed above. And what that said was, if you have, for example, log base two, but you wanna convert it to natural log or common log base 10, you certainly can. So I learned this as log of the tall over log of the small, tall in font size, not necessarily larger in value over log of the small, because again, that a right there is going to be smaller in font size. It's gonna be little. Log of the m over log of the a, or natural log of m over natural log of a. So that was our change of base. We could go to log base five if we wanted to, but for derivatives, we're gonna to wanna to stick with natural log. So because of that, I don't need to memorize this first derivative rule because I will be able to have it using change of base. This next one does not apply the chain rule, so I don't need to memorize that one either. This bottom one for exponential functions does not use the chain rule. So really, all I'm going to ask my students to memorize are these two right here, so let's go over these real quick. So if I have derivative of natural log of a function, so the derivative with respect to x of natural log of g of x, it is going to be the derivative of that argument, so that's what g prime says, right? Derivative of that argument over itself, g of x. No more natural log, just the derivative over itself. And then if you have derivative with respect to x of a to a function, so here it's very important to note that your base is a value, two to something or five to something. So it might look like two to the x squared plus five x, or five to the x, okay? E to the x would qualify here as well. So it will be itself times natural log of a, then we have to apply chain rule, so times the derivative of what's inside, and that would be what's inside of our exponent, so that would be f prime. And I will show you that you can actually derive this rule by using natural log. Okay, so we'll show that towards the end. So let's look through a couple of examples. First of all, in this question number one, if I ask you to find the derivative, if I leave this problem as it sits right now, it has natural log in it, and it has natural log of this quotient to the one half. So I'm gonna need power rule, right? Because that's what's gonna bring down my half, keep the base the same, subtract one from my exponent, then times the derivative of what's inside, which is quotient. So I have power, chain, quotient, and this is all inside of natural log, right? So I have also natural log differentiation. So my thought is if I have to use more than three rules, there's got to be something else that I can do with this from the beginning, perhaps, to make it a little bit easier. And natural log is that something. So I can go through an algebraic rewrite here using my natural log properties. So I can say since both my numerator and denominator are to the one-half power, I can write it as such. I can separate because of my quotient. That becomes the difference then my exponents can be brought down in front. Now this is the function that I'm gonna take the derivative of. Coefficients are gonna stay, so this one half is gonna stay, but then the derivative of natural log of an argument, right, of that x plus one, is going to be the derivative of the argument, so derivative of x plus one is one over itself, x plus one. Minus, let's do that again. One half is a coefficient, so it will stay. The derivative of natural log of this argument would be the derivative of this underlined x minus one, which is one over itself, 
x minus 1. I would not get common denominators or do anything else at this time. It's a great first derivative. Let's do another one. One thing that you should note about natural log is it is a function. It is not being multiplied by anything. So this under no terms ever, ever, ever gets distributed. It's not multiplication. We distribute in values. We don't necessarily distribute in functions, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is look at this as natural log of this quantity. I'm ready to take the derivative. Now temporarily, don't worry about these absolute value bars. We'll talk about them at the end. So my y prime is going to be, since it's natural log of a function, it's going to be the derivative of that function, the negative 1 minus 10x over this function. That's it. So let's talk about why the absolute value bars have to be there real quick. What would be my domain restriction to this derivative? Well, the domain is going to be any value except where 2 minus x minus 5x squared equals 0, right? So it's any value except where that denominator is 0. Could this whole quantity, I'll highlight in green, could that whole quantity be negative? Sure, I can divide by negative, that's no problem. It just can't be 0. But take a look, that's the same quantity that's in your absolute value. One thing you should know about natural log is you cannot take the natural log of a negative number. So for example, natural log of negative three does not exist. Nope, natural log of zero does not exist. Because again, you're saying if you're repeatedly multiplying or dividing by e, this natural log has e as a base, you can't get a negative number out because you're multiplying or dividing by a positive number. Same thing with natural log of zero. So if that's the case, I want my domains to match. So because a first derivative describes the original, I want these domains to match. So it will become very common, especially in future chapters, that you look at those natural log arguments as having absolute value bars around them, because then if I do get a negative number for that green highlighted quantity, it's okay because the absolute value bars in the natural log are going to turn it positive. Let's take a look at this number three. Find y prime and y double prime given y equals natural log of x over x squared. You could certainly use quotient rule here, that's what I will do, or you could use product rule and bring up that x squared as x to the negative two. It's whatever you're more comfortable with. So I'm gonna leave it as it is and use quotient rule. So it will be y prime equals my low, copy it down, d high. So the derivative of natural log of x, there's my argument, is the derivative of that argument, which is one over itself, minus the natural log of x times d low. So the derivative of x squared is two x all over this low squared. So before we go to y double prime, let's simplify this and combine terms as we can here. So my numerator will become x minus, and just so I don't accidentally change that argument of natural log, I'm gonna write the 2x in front of the natural log of x. And hopefully we can see that we can actually factor out an x from the numerator. Don't forget that one is the placeholder. And then I can divide that one factor out, so that'll leave x cubed. So my y prime is one minus two natural log of x all over x cubed. Okay, from there, let's find the second derivative. So I'm gonna use quotient rule again. So now this is y double prime, so low d high, derivative of one is zero, derivative of negative two natural log of x would be negative two times one over x, derivative over itself, right, of that argument, minus the high as a quantity, one minus two natural log of x, d low, or three x squared, all over low squared. And there should be some simplifying that I have to do, because I will be able to combine like terms here. So I will have a negative two in my first term. One of those x's divide out, so negative two x squared. 
I will distribute both the 3x squared and the negative into each term. So that will be minus 3x squared plus 6x squared natural log of x. And I highly recommend anytime I'm doing these simplifying process, go ahead and pause the video and try it yourself. And then, you know, play the video and see if you got that part correct, just so you can test your ability here. So y double prime is negative 5x squared, right? Because these will combine together. And since those combine together, and my other term in my numerator also has an x squared, I'm going to go ahead and factor out x squared. So negative 5 plus 6 natural log of x all over x to the 6th. Or, if I divide that out, um, I'm going to write the positive term first. So 6 natural log of x minus 5 all over x to the 4th. And I'll write that next to this first derivative here for a reason. So if you compare your original function, which I'll highlight in yellow here, to your first derivative, which I'll highlight in blue, to my second derivative, which I'll highlight in green, one thing I can note is that look at your denominators. They went from x squared, then to x cubed, then to x to the fourth. That is a decrease of a power of one because it's x to the negative two in my numerator, x to the negative three in my numerator, then x to the negative four in my numerator. So that will also help me potentially determine what I have to factor out to get a simplified derivative. Okay, one more on exponentials. So I'm gonna do this problem applying the rule and then I'm going to show you how to do it using natural logs so you don't actually have to memorize this exponential rule. But if we know it, this is, now see how you have a constant, you have a value here as your base. I have five to these, so I can't apply power rule. I have variables up here in my exponent. If I subtract one from that, I'm not gonna get a number. So the power rule does not apply. So this is why we have the exponential function derivative. So I have itself, so five to the x squared minus nine x times natural log of the base, so times natural log of five, times the derivative of the exponent, two x minus nine. That is it, that is the derivative, but I'm gonna rewrite the problem and show you that that's the derivative using natural log. So let's just say that I wasn't sure or didn't know or couldn't remember the rule. Go ahead and take the natural log of both sides because you do have an equation. So I'm gonna say natural log of y equals natural log of five to the x squared minus nine x. And by natural log properties, this exponent here can come down in front of natural log. And here it is important to note that natural log of five is a number, so that is a coefficient of the x squared minus nine x, and coefficients stay with us. But for example, if I go to find the derivative of all that, I don't need to use product rule because this is just a constant coefficient. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the derivative now. So we have natural log of y. So if we know implicit differentiation, this works out great. It's the derivative of the argument, so y prime over itself, which is y. Don't forget that over y part. Equals, now I'm gonna do the derivative of the right-hand side. Again, natural log of five is a coefficient, so if you'd like to see it in front, that's fine as well, but coefficients stay. Then I'm just doing the derivative of x squared minus nine x, which is two x minus nine. Well, all this is great, but remember we were given this red function up above and we were asked to find y prime or its derivative. So solve for y prime, which means you're gonna take whatever is on the left and you're gonna multiply it by y and all of this and multiply it by y. Well, what is y? Y is the original. So I wrote down the whole left-hand side, and now it's times the original, which is five to the x squared minus nine x. And if you look at both of these, they are exactly the same. They have three factors, a natural log of five factor, a two x minus nine factor, and a five to the x squared minus nine x, or the original factor. So it doesn't matter if you have the exponential function rule memorized or if you use natural log of both sides, one is certainly quicker than the other. You can see the length of steps, but again, if you're in a jam, go ahead and use natural log. It will help you. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful.